We are really moving through the Formula One calendar now, and we're heading to a favourite circuit of mine. It's Canada, and it's round nine. The race at the Gilles Villeneuve circuit takes place over 70 laps. The circuit itself is a 4.361 kilometre long track. The most constructor wins at this circuit is Ferrari with 14, and after their success at the Monaco Grand Prix, they'll be hoping to add to that tally this weekend. I'm pretty sure Red Bull and McLaren are going to have something to say about that though. The circuit only has 14 corners. It's actually fairly short, but it's a street circuit, so grip can be fairly low early on and it can be very bumpy. Something that may not suit previous winner Max Verstappen and his Red Bull team. The tyres for this weekend are actually the exact same as we had in Monaco and Imola, the C3, C4 and C5, the softest available in the Pirelli range. So let's talk weather. I wouldn't read too much into this just yet because there was rain forecast for Monaco earlier in the race week and it ended up being a lovely day. Well, in terms of the weather, not in terms of the racing. But currently, there is a chance of rain due for the whole weekend at Canada. Again, this can change closer to the weekend itself. But you may remember that last year was a wet qualifying and the year before. And as it stands, I'd be surprised if at least one of the sessions isn't wet, either on the Friday or the Saturday. I do expect the race itself will probably be dry though. We know that rain can be the great equaliser, so if it is a wet qualifying, it could certainly spice things up. There has also been some changes at the track. One of these changes is down at turn eight, turn nine. That's the chicane under the bridge that leads down to the hairpin. In a trend that I really appreciate, the circuit has changed the tarmac runoff in this area for grass. As you can see from this Google Earth image comparison between 2023 and 24. Most of the other runoffs at this circuit are grass anyway, including the chicane down at turn three that you might remember Sebastian Vettel going over when he was defending from Hamilton a fair few years ago now. I personally like this. I think we saw from Imola that having gravel on those turns definitely made the drivers change their mindsets and they were punished for their mistakes. So I'm all for this going forward. Moving on, and the track has actually been relayed since we last raced here. Around nine months ago, work commenced to relay the surface and replace all of the kerbs. And this is one of the big issues with Canada for some of the teams was the bumpy surface. I don't think it had been redone since 2005, so it had been down for a long time and was in need of a refresh. There have been improvements to various other parts of the track as well, but this resurfacing could really help Red Bull because their car currently seems to struggle with bumps and curbs especially. They lose a lot of performance when raising their car, so if they have a smoother circuit, they could really benefit from that. Speaking about Red Bull, it was just announced today that Sergio Perez has signed a further two-year contract extension with Red Bull. That means he's going to be with the team until at least the end of the 2026 season. That puts him firmly into the first season of the new regulations. I'm a little bit surprised at this because McLaren and Ferrari are both bringing the fight to Red Bull with two very strong drivers. And Perez, well, he can be off his game from time to time and that could lose them points in the Constructors' Championship. Despite that, he has signed a new contract, so that puts to bed any rumours of any drivers moving up from their sister team. Now, moving on to this weekend, Perez does need a good result at Canada. We know he had a bad qualifying in Monaco, and then a very unfortunate start to the race, crashing out on lap one. But he hasn't had a good few years in Canada. In 2022, he qualified in P13, when Max Verstappen, his teammate, was in P1. He then lost the engine and had to DNF from that race. Then in 2023, he qualified P12, while his teammate, again, put it on pole position. He then finished that race in sixth. At least his qualifying was improving. Admittedly, they were wet weather qualifying sessions. He will hope to just have a quiet but successful weekend this time around, but Helmut Marko believes Red Bull could struggle this weekend and believes they have simulator issues. When speaking to Speed Week, he said, The problem starts in the simulator, which signaled that the car was going over the curbs perfectly. Simply put, that means the simulator and reality don't correlate. We are optimistic we can find out why the simulator produces data that does not correspond to reality, but Montreal could be a difficult weekend for us. Red Bull have struggled at street circuits so far, but maybe Canada is where they can turn it around. I'm expecting a close battle between the newly upgraded Ferrari and McLaren cars and the Red Bulls. We don't really know where they're all going to stack up just yet, and it's likely to change track to track, which is great for us. If the resurfacing has reduced the bumpiness of the track, I do expect Red Bull to be, you know, back towards the front of the pack, just like they were at Imola. We'll have to wait and see, though. 
I'm really looking forward to this one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.